This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Dickerson versus Manuel. You all are a couple living together. You've been together for about two years, and you thought you had met the man of your dreams. But you don't think that right now. Ms. Dickerson, can you tell us why you opened this case? Your Honor, I'm here today because I'm in love with Andre, and... I just think that he's the perfect guy. Everything that I've dreamed of, everything that I prayed about in a man, he's in front of me. Okay. And things change, and I just want to know if he's doing something, because I don't want to waste my time. And you believe what's going on is some cheating? Yes, I do. All right. Mr. Manuel, that was a, that was a great buildup. So I... She said you're the man of her dreams, and everything she's ever looked for in a man, and... Everything else is just that one piece she's concerned about. Just that one little piece, Mr. Cutler? Just that one little piece. <laughs> she's worried to cheating. No, Yarn, I'm not cheating. I love this girl. Like, when I met her, I knew she was the one. She's the love of my life. I'm not cheating. I'm here to prove that today. All right. All right. How did you two meet? I'm a bartender, and... He's okay. one of my regulars. He used to come there all the time. And, you know, I knew that he had a crush on me. He liked me, and he wanted to take me out based on the conversation. And what I love to eat and everything that I like, because I love to eat, the first time I went to his house, he literally had everything that I loved in his refrigerator. What? So I was just like... <laughs> How about that? All right. Mr. Manuel did everything by the manual. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I can't save you all from him. He's just gonna... I mean, he just laid it out there. Boom, 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 boom. Waste no time. <laughs> it sounds like a fairy tale. You met yes. your dream guy, but for some reason, we're here because of a nightmare. Tell me why we are here. So, let's talk about the woman answering the phone in his hotel room. Oh! <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So, this in particular time... You know, I called him, he didn't answer the phone. And I'm like, dang, like, okay, like, that's not normal. That's very strange. So I was like, okay, well, let me just call the hotel and get the hotel room and call his room phone. So when I called, a woman answered the phone. Oh! And I was confused and my heart dropped. And I was just like, is Andre there, Mr. Manuel? To sound like I was the lady at the front desk. And it got real silent. He snatched the phone. And once he heard that it was my voice, he hung up. So, yeah. And then she said hello, and he's like, oops. Click. <laughs> okay. He, he didn't say okay. it, but that was yeah. like, oh, this is bad. Yeah. So, literally, five minutes later, I get a phone call. He FaceTime me. He's downstairs in the lobby out of breath. And I'm like, <laughs> are you serious? Like, who is that? Who, why is there a woman answering the phone? And he was like, it was housekeeping. I said, what is she keeping? Like, why? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is she on? You know, why is she picking up your room phone? And he was like, no, 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 no. And I was like, okay, well, go to your room right now. Let's, let me see. All right, so, Mr. Manuel, who, who was a woman in your room? Housekeeping. I had called downstairs oh, for... I had called downstairs for some towels. So, she brought some towels up, and then I was, I was over there at the desk. I was doing something, and it just so happened when she came, the phone rung. And I asked her, can she pick it up? Because I was doing something. She picked it up. And it was Alex on the phone. I guess she said she was front desk. So I got on the phone, and she was doing a little bit more than what she said. She was cursing me out, who is blah, blah. And who the like, black is that answering your phone and all that? Right. OK. And, and she was very loud. So it's kind of embarrassing in front of the housekeeping, because like I say, I was doing nothing in there. But it was kind of embarrassing. So I hung up the phone, and I went downstairs. I immediately called her back on my cell phone. So but there was nothing going on in the room. It was housekeeping. I have stayed at a lot of hotels, a lot, and uh, never have I had housekeeping <laughs> answer the phone. Answer the phone. Never. They usually don't even come in the room. If you call for towels, they knock on the door and say, here. But if he's doing something and it's housekeeping, come in. If you tell him to come in, they'll come in. If he's doing something, like, set him right there. At that point, the phone rings. He's like, can you grab that? That's right, Your Honor. Yeah, is that what happened? That's right, yep. Yes. Why are you looking at me like I stepped off <laughs> of a plane from another planet? Um, because I think you stepped off a plane from another planet. <laughs> Cutler, come on, man. I, you know, I know you're trying to help 
Mr. Manuel. I'm trying to be objective. I'm not helping either side. I'm trying to be objective. I'm trying to give a reasonable well, explanation for something that happened. I find it objectionable. <laughs> <laughs> that you're being objective. I don't like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you have the hotel situation. Yes. Are there any other situations that make you go... Yes. There was oh. another situation with the lipstick on the hotel stationery. Yeah. So, lipstick on a sta... The hotel stationery. Yeah. I have proof. I have evidence. Okay. Yeah. What, tell me what happened, and then we'll get the proof. Okay. Um, so, we live together, and normally, I always take his clothes to the cleaners because he's busy because it's his work schedule. Yeah. And so, this in particular time, after the hotel phone situation with this lady, I was like, hmm, you know, like, let me go through his pocket. Because I've never been the person to invade privacy or anything. And so, when I went through his back pocket, I opened up a love note with a woman's oh. lips and her room number on there. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you brought that with you today? Yes, I did. Okay, Ron, would you grab that for us, please? Yes, ma'am. Well, there it is. There it is. Room 603, sealed with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Well, you know, they, got that, a... they got some hellacious housekeepers they... at, at this hotel. Full service housekeeper. I, don't, I need to get the name so you never ever go there. You don't want them to answer my phone? No, that'd be a problem. Okay. Who is in room 603 that's leaving you kisses? I have no idea. Oh, yeah, right. Do you remember getting this note? Yes, I do. Oh. I was downstairs. I was downstairs at the bar, and it was a, a bunch of females sitting down there. It was, it was a lady sitting across from me, who had gave the bartender that that note. Oh. And when she gave it to me, I didn't want to be rude and just throw it away right then and when there. When the bartender gave it to you? Yes. Okay. And she was oh, yeah. she was right there across from me, so I didn't want to be rude and just throw it away. So I put it in my pocket. This was not the lady who answered the phone, was it? No. <laughs> All right. So, so once you put it in your pocket, you didn't even think about it anymore right, until... I forgot about it. I, I intended to take it out and throw it away, but I forgot about it. Please tell me this is the only thing you found. No. Oh. 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 What else you got? So, I decided to drive Andre's car to go to my favorite restaurant to get something to eat. And I seen Elise with his name and a woman's name on it. Elise? Yes. For like, what? An apartment. Wow. So... Did you know that you were moving? No. <laughs> did you know that you were moving in with another woman? No. So this was a surprise, Elise? Yes. So, literally, when I read it, I was like, wait a minute, like, let me look at this. And so, I pulled over and I was like, okay, this address seems like the address where we live. Oh. So, it's literally five minutes away from where we stay. All right, now, you submitted that lease to the court, correct? Yes. Okay, let's take a look at that. It says, basic rental agreement or residential lease, the owner and the tenant, this is the person who is supposed to be living there, Andre Manuel. And he's the owner, not the co-signer. Yeah. yeah. And then the yeah. occupants who's going to be occupying the apartment is Kashana Burton. So, Mr. Manuel, who is Kashana Burton and why is she going to be occupying an apartment that you are the tenant on? I was helping a friend out. She's, and she needed someone to co-sign. Like, she needed someone to help her get an apartment. I've been knowing her for, like, five years. There's nothing going on between us. Okay, it's but you say cosign. This shows you as a tenant. Right. Sure. Andre Emanuel, her name's not shown as a tenant. It just shows her as the occupant. Right. Well, her, her credit wasn't good enough to get the apartment, so I was doing a friend a favor and helping her out and getting the apartment. So is there anything going on with you and this woman? No, she's just a friend. Are, are you providing housekeeping services? <laughs> <laughs> no, Your Honor. <laughs> Ms. Dickerson, you clearly think that there is something else going on for him to take this lease off with Miss Burton. Yeah. I just want my peace again. Tell him what those tears represent. Pain. Deceit. I'm not doing anything. I'm not cheating. You know that. You know I love you. And when you see it in black and white like this... It hurts. Especially, like, when you meet somebody and they sweep you off your feet and they're everything that you've ever desired. And for them to do this, it's like, why? And so he's told you, he's given you an explanation for it. He's told you his side of the story. You don't believe it. No. 
and no. you really think that he's cheating with the woman on this lease. Well, there's your side, there's your boyfriend's side, and there's that woman on the Lisa's side. She's here. Rod, bring her in, please. <laughs> Would you state your name, please, for the record? Kashana Burton. And Ms. Burton, what is the nature of your relationship with Mr. Manuel? Um, me and uh, Andre have been friends for about five years. We met in a gym, and we're just friends. That's like a brother to me. Were you aware that he was in a relationship with Miss Miss Dickerson? <laughs> no, I was not. Oh! I was not. But you all have been friends for five years. Yeah, I honestly thought he was dating someone else. I've met all his. What? I've met. I've met all his serious girlfriends um, and women that he's, you know, dealt with, and I didn't know that he was dating her. So you didn't even know that they were living together. No. So when you asked him to help you on this lease, you didn't know there was another girlfriend. Absolutely not. No, but I mean, I wouldn't think that it would be an issue. But no, I did not. I never heard of her. Why didn't Miss Miss Burton know that Miss Dickerson existed in your life? Well, I, I don't know all Alex's friends neither, but like I say, there's it, nothing going on between me and her, so it wasn't, it's like, it's, it wasn't like I was hiding it. It just never came upon it as of yet. Why did Miss Burton think you were dating somebody altogether different? Well, she, she's speaking of previous girlfriends before Alex, which was years ago. So is your testimony to this court today that you are not cheating on Miss Dickerson? I'm not cheating on Miss Dickerson. I love her. Okay. Well, I think we've heard enough testimony. I think we've got a good picture of what's going on here. We've got the fact that a woman answered his hotel room phone. We've got the post-it note with the lipstick and the room number on it. And we got the fact that Mr. Manuel has signed a lease for Ms. Burton. And he's never even talked to Ms. Burton about the fact that he's in a relationship with Ms. Dickerson. And for all these reasons, Ms. Dickerson is sure that he's cheating. And yep. if he is cheating, what's next? I'm gonna have to put on my big girl panties and just leave. Like, I don't deserve that. This court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court would like to call Kendall Shule, licensed and certified polygraph examiner, to determine is he cheating? Yeah. Why would this court Kendall Shule. How are you, Mr. Schill? Great, Your Honor. Thank you for asking. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. We got some... We need your help today. Could you share with this couple your credentials? I spent almost 30 years with the FBI in Washington, D.C. During that time, I completed a master's degree in polygraph. I think I'm the only person in the world that has one. <laughs> and when I retired, I moved to Knoxville, Tennessee, where I opened up my own polygraph and private investigating business. All right. You conducted a polygraph examination of Mr. Manuel. I did, Your Honor. And you asked him a series of questions. I did. You asked him, have you had sexual intercourse with Miss Burton, the woman listed on the lease Miss Dickerson found in your glove compartment? What was his response? He said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. <laughs> You asked Mr. Manuel, the day Ms. Dickerson called your hotel room and a woman answered your phone, did you have sexual intercourse with that woman? What was his response? He said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. Oh! Mr. Manuel, who was it that answered the phone? Couldn't have been uh, a housekeeper. Uh, well, it could have been. I guess it could have been. So did you have sexual intercourse with the housekeeper? No, I didn't. You asked Mr. Manuel, during your two-year relationship with Ms. Dickerson, have you had sexual intercourse with any woman other than Ms. Dickerson? What was his response to that question? He said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. Oh! 
if not the housekeeper, who else have you had sexual intercourse with during the time that you've been involved with Ms. Dickerson? No one. Okay. Well, Ms. Dickerson, you came here to get some answers. You came here to find out what was going on, and you've gotten your answers. What do you want to do with this relationship? It's over. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> you can have your friend. <laughs> Ms. Ms. Dickerson, I am sorry. And even though this, is, this dream has become a nightmare, you can wake up. And when you wake up, you get up. And when you get up, you move on. Yeah. But this ain't the end. This is just the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Yes. All right, so you're gonna be okay. Thank you. You all are dating. You've been together two years. You have one child and one child on the way. And I understand that you all are in the process of house hunting. But whether you hunt for one house or two houses depends on what happens in this courtroom today. Is that right, Ms. Prickett? Yes, Your Honor. Right, you started this case. Tell us why. I believe my boyfriend's cheating. When we first were pregnant with our first one, um, he started acting different, things started to decline, and now I'm pregnant with my second one with him. And I need answers, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Reyes, I mean, there's a change whenever there's a, a new baby, a blessed event, but this is not the kind of change she was looking for. You changed into a different person, according to her. Um, I don't know if I've changed into a different person, but maybe our relationship has become a little different. But, Mr. Reyes, she's worried that you're cheating on her. I mean, what is it that you're here to prove? Well, I'm honestly here to prove my innocence. Yeah, no? Okay. I mean, you've brought this case here. You have some reasons to think that something's going on. One day, his phone's dead. He puts it on the charger, and boom, a text message comes in, and it's from a girl saying, are you the guy from Tinder? Oh. I have, and I also have evidence. Okay. Ron, would you please get this item? Yes, Jenna. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. The, the message was simply, are you the guy from Tinder? Correct? Correct. And you were like, what's he doing on Tinder? Exactly. And he never told me one word about it. Okay. Wait, hold it. Did you see the date on this? Yeah. February, February 15th. 15th. Oh, that's a horrible day. That's the day after Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. All you, right. You on Tinder the day after Valentine's Day? Ooh. Yes, Is that a no? yes? <laughs> I wasn't on Tinder. Well, wait, wait a minute. The question still remains. What are you doing on Tinder? Well, the story goes. No, what I don't need a story. I need a response. My response is <laughs> that um, me and Keola were going through a little thing because of her insecurities, and I'm not making an excuse for myself, but... Um, okay, wait, wait, but, wait, wait. Hold on now. Okay, I'm trying to get to, to my question. I yeah, feel like you're taking is, me around the it's, block. No, nah, it's not around the block. It's just an elaborate response. But we don't I, need I an need elaborate, elaborate response. response. We need the response to this. Why were you on Tinder? Anyways, long story short... Please. <laughs> Keola got mad at me because one day I did tell her I was looking in the ex-neighborhood, but not because of any kind of emotional attachment and everything. It was just a, a memory of something that I... It was a car I had, and I loved that car. <laughs> Hold up. Wait, am I missing something? Let me look. No. You're not okay. missing a thing. I'm, I'm looking at your face. It's just as befuddled as mine is because you still haven't <laughs> answered the question of why you were on Tinder. Yeah. Are, are you... Okay. <laughs> Y'all are so nuts. So, so Mr. Rams, let me, let me help you with this, okay? What's that? Why were you trying to make a connection with somebody else who's not Miss Prickett? We were broken up for about a, a little over a week. And in the middle of that, I made a Tinder account while we were broken up. That, that there it is. Woo! <laughs> You I want you to know the whole story. I don't want you to think I, I just made a Tinder account, no? Uh, okay, well, okay. See, how, see how quickly and succinct you said that? That's well, all you had to say the I'm first sorry. time we I'm asked sorry. you. I'm sorry, I'm just too elaborate. But he didn't elaborate. come trying to talk to me. He was going to try to talk to other girls. You want to see your ex? Absolutely. I, I mean, it's clear that you see Tinder ex? isn't the swipe toward you. It's the swipe toward somebody else. Exactly. So, hey. And I might... 
just have to swipe left for this relationship. Oh, okay. If I find out he's cheating. Okay. So when you found out he was on Tinder, how did you feel about that? I was so hurt because he didn't tell me. He didn't come clean like, hey, I made an account, I talked to some girls. He just got back with me. And I'm like, really? When I see the messages, like, I asked you if you talked to any girls, and his response is no. And I left it at that, you know? And then you start seeing these signs. Yeah. I've also um, wrote down the mileage on our car, and um, I've written down the mileage, and then when he gets back, I'll write it down again, you know, to see how much he actually used, and they don't add up. Mm -hmm. so, that don't sound like a little bit of a paranoia. Well, it's only paranoia if the mileage doesn't add up. When the mileage doesn't add up. <laughs> no. I actually submitted a video. Okay, well, let's see the video. Joe's supposed to be leaving to his friend's house in a few minutes, so I'm checking the odometer. His friend's house is about 3.7 miles away, so let's see what it is when he gets back. He just got back. So he went 19 miles, which is significantly different than 3.7 miles. Mm -hmm. So the question is, where did he go? Mm -hmm. And you think he went to some other woman's house? Yes, Your Honor. Who were you going to see? Nobody. Somebody? Nobody. Somebody? Nobody. <laughs> really? Where the extra 19 miles come Your from? Your Honor. I don't know. Un untold mysteries of the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so he's blaming it all on your hormones mm -hmm. and being pregnant. Yeah. Have you observed or seen anything that makes you believe that Mr. Rays is cheating? Um, well, I come across an e-pass notice, and I'm like, what's this? I open it up, and I'm getting a ticket for running an e-pass at 2.26 a.m. I'm pregnant, in bed. I don't get out of bed at that hour. No. And when I asked him... He had quite the response. <laughs> what did he what say? What was his response? <laughs> <laughs> he said that someone could have taken our car and drove it around and then parked it back in the driveway. And you submitted a copy of the ticket to the court with your papers, correct? Yes, Your Honor. So here it is, uh, the date. 6-23-19 at 2.25 a.m. <laughs> You know, maybe mm -hmm. this is where the extra 19 miles came from. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rays. Yep, really? That's what that's the best you got is somebody took the car and brought it back. I I got friends that done that type of stuff before. Like taking a car from somebody and putting it back where they parked it and putting their keys back where they found okay, it. Okay, look, you you can't okay. keep, look. Where were you going? Nowhere. Where were you going? You it were wasn't going me. somewhere. It wasn't me. This wasn't you. Who What's else would who else would drive your car? Yeah, hey, you're asking the wrong person. No, I'm not. It's yes, only two are. of you to drive the car. Not necessarily. There's a lot of people in this world. Okay, wait a minute. Do you understand why she believes you're cheating? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely, because she has this whole hormone thing going no. on. No! I said, do you understand why she thinks I you're understand cheating? and I know. How's that? The proof is in the pudding. There is no pudding. Well, there is a problem, I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. We got the easy pass, we've got Tinder, we've got the things that we've talked about. What other reasons do you believe that he's cheated? He also made a song about meeting a bad girl at the bar. Ooh. All right. I also and... have evidence of that as well. Rob, would you get that for yes, us, please? Sure. All this evidence. All right, now tell us what we're looking at. Those are the lyrics of the song. She makes me feel like I'm Pablo Escobar. I might need some Henny. I might pop myself a bar. I just met me a bad blank right down by the bar bar. Need to know your name. Need to know who you are. That's gas. OK. All right. And you think this is proof that of somebody he met at a bar bar? Yes, because I'm not at no bar. So did you write this about some I babe you met at a bar bar? Only I can write something that fire. Only me. So you just writing about stuff you don't know about. Listen, I'm an artist. This is what I, I'm a phenomenal songwriter. I could write songs about you, and you'd be like, dang, I feel like he knows me, but I really don't. I'm that good. Well, you know what? Well, this song might be fire, but we're going to see if this relationship is going to explode. Ooh. Ooh. All right. 
So we have a friend of the court, Dr. Jeff Gardier, who is going to talk to us about women, pregnancy, hormones, and how all this plays out. Rob, would you please escort Dr. Jeff Gardarian to share with us? Yes, ma'am. Hello, Your Honors. Hi, Dr. Hey. Jeff. Hey. This is the famed Dr. Hey. Jeff we talk about. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Now, we've heard testimony that Mr. Reyes believes that Ms. Prickett is experiencing uh, pregnancy hormones and it's causing her to be out of her mind about his cheating and causing her to make up stuff, and is paranoid. Are women emotional like that, you know, after childbirth or during childbirth? How does that work? Well, if she had a history of a postpartum depression from the first birth, we see that the chances might be increased statistically that she would have a second postpartum depression. And so we, you may see more of the accusations or possibly even more of the acting out on the part of the father in this particular case because he may not be getting the attention and the focus he once had before the baby and now the second baby is going to be on the scene. If there is cheating here, what can you give this young family to help them soldier through? Well, you have to understand that it's not just about the two of you. Uh, soon it's going to be about the four of you, yeah. right? Not just the baby that's there, but the baby that's on the way. So I never advise patients to stay together for the children, but I do advise them to stay in love and have a healthy relationship yeah. for the children. Yeah. All right, Dr. Gadeer, thank you so much. <clears throat> so here's what we have, love. Ms. Prickett is like, I am sure that he is cheating. And she has indicated that if she finds out he's cheating, she doesn't know if she can go forward with this relationship. Yeah, I'm not going forward with the relationship. It, she's taking it a step further. She's like, I'm out. He's out. He's out. I'm out too then. She came here to get some answers. Mm -hmm. We clearly are not getting any straight answers from Mr. Reyes. All right. So to get to the bottom of this, this court has done its own full and complete investigation. At this time, the court is going to call a certified polygraph examiner, Tommy Platt, to determine, is he cheating? I'm watching Miss Prickett, love, and she is taking these deep breaths. You are really worried. I really just hope he's not cheating. And if he is... <laughs> You're going to be devastated. Mr. Platt, would you state your credentials, please, for the court? I've been a licensed polygraph examiner for over 11 years and conducted nearly 3,000 examinations. Wow. That's for you. We already know how good he is. That's for you. You're gonna say how good I am, too. Oh, okay. You're getting close. Real, real close to the line. Oh, I'm gonna stop no you. Lines. Yeah, no, you know, I'm not gonna let you because I got him to get you out of here when you get yeah. close to me. Hey. So let's be very clear. I'm just a defendant. I can't let people throw dirt on my name. I'm just defending myself. I want you to be quiet. You conducted a polygraph examination of Mr. Reyes, correct? Yes, sir. You asked him, since being in a relationship with Miss Prickett, have you had sexual intercourse with a woman from the dating site? What was his response? He stated no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. Bada boom, oh. bada boom. <laughs> One down, three to go. You asked Mr. Race, on the night in question at 2.25 a.m., were you the one driving Miss Prickett's car when she got the ticket? What was his response? He stated no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was telling the truth. Bada boom, bada bing. Two down, one to go. Huh? You asked, Mr. Ray, since being in a relationship with Miss Prickett, have you had intercourse or physical sexual contact with anyone other than Miss Prickett? What was his response? He stated no. 
What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. Yeah. Don't count your eggs, but it hatched. That's all I'm saying. He know what I'm talking about. Look at him. He know what I'm talking about. Yeah, he do. Ms. Tyler. Well, Ms. Prickett, how are you feeling? Relieved. Relieved? Mm-hmm. Okay. Happy. Re happy that it turned out that he was not cheating, right? Yes. And I ain't take that car. Neither. I just want him now to take things serious. Yeah. You all have known each other for 20 years. You're dating, you're living together. But this relationship has hit a snag. And whether that snag gets worked out depends on what happens in this courtroom today. Uh, Mr. Ducharme, what's on the line here? What's on the line today is this relationship's on the line today. Like, it's a lot of things go on. And I don't look for it, but, like, I can't help but to notice, like, sometimes maybe she might have, like, a hickey here, and then she have a hickey here. I'm like, girl, is this a hickey? She's like, nah, I ain't no hickey, man. That's just something. So what does all this lead you to believe? She's spending all this time with these extra fellows, and, like, I just need to know what kind of actions is going on with these fellows. Because uh, she claims innocent, but I claim wrong. All right, Miss Daly, why is this... Why is your being here important to you? To prove to him that his imagination runs really wild, like those hickeys, because that's something you do in junior high. Okay. I don't have any. You don't have, like, a traveling birthmark that just no. moves from place to place, do you? I have three birthmarks, and not only one resembles a hickey. Okay. The other two are light brown. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Deshaun, how, how did you two meet? How did you all get together? Okay, Judge, we met about 20 years ago. We <laughs> ran with the same circle, and, uh... It was always, like, uh, she was just too busy for me back then, like, over the last 20 years, and then, uh... We came over at a mutual friend's house and uh, we ran into each other again. And uh, I guess she had time for me this time. Said about three words to her and it was over after that. It was on? Yeah. It, was... it only took you three words? Yeah, about three hot words. She said, it's gonna be 90 days before we make anything happen, which was cute to me. <laughs> <laughs> and like, He did not so... say that was cute to me. It was, okay. And I'm like, man, I'm kind of old for this, but we could try. Uh, and, okay. Because that was my question. Did, did you start out thinking, okay, but then sometime during, you're like, we're not going to make it 90 days? No, or well, from the beginning where you were like... Yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. Okay, whatever. Hey, Judge, it was cute. It was cute. <laughs> yeah. oh, so, so, you know, oh. inquiring minds want to know, yeah. how many days of the 90 days did y'all make it? <laughs> seven. <laughs> seven? That's why. <laughs> you said I'm seven? Lying. You said <laughs> seven? Yeah. Okay. That's a lie. I was like, yeah. wait a minute. Look, we didn't have... That's a week. That's, that's a week. That's a week. That's a week. Oh, you can take me back to court. We can test it. He just wants to make it that answer, then that's all going to make okay, it. Okay, nine, maybe. It was... Maybe nine. Well, here's the thing. We have folks come in here. They don't make it past half an hour. So, yeah. you know, the fact <laughs> y'all got the nine days or seven days, eh. <laughs> I, wait a minute. Mr. Taylor, I'm almost impressed. <laughs> so, 20 years of admiring her and thinking, hmm, you make this connection, what has happened to bring you to couples court? Okay, so, the first thing that happens is, uh, we were hanging out one time, we were at a friend's house, and her phone, it, her phone turned up missing. Okay. So, we used my phone to track her phone. Okay. And it all worked out, we ended up getting her phone back, and also ends well, but we get back to the house, and, and she pitches a fit, and stomps off, and she takes off. Well... Okay. After a little while, like, I started thinking, well, where'd the girl go? And, uh, oh, find my phone. So I go ahead, I open my phone back up, and I'm like, man, I've got you now. And, and uh, <laughs> I find her iPhone again. Well, man, it says she's at a motel on the southwest side. And I said, oh. So I'm sitting here thinking, oh, I'm already in the car at this point, on my way to the motel. Like, I'm a, I know you're there. So here I come pull up to the motel, and I see her car. So I send another message. I said, uh, babe, what's the room number? You know? And she don't reply. I don't get a response. I said, what, baby, you're not happy to see me? You know what I mean? I came all the way down here to catch up with you. No reply. So I'm not gonna sit there and just drag this out. If she wanna reply, I'm gonna just move around and I'll deal with it later, whatever the case may be. So about 15 minutes after I leave from the hotel, now all of a sudden her iPhone password is changed, the email password is changed, and when she checks in later, I said, uh, you didn't see the messages? She said, what messages? Well, obviously, you're on your phone changing your passwords. How you didn't see the messages? So, hold on. Let me, I need to talk to Miss Staley. Miss Staley, were you at a motel after this fight? Uh, yes. And, and they had other people there. So, it wasn't just you in the hotel room. It was other people? Yes. And this person? Yes. Why didn't you respond to Mr. Ducharme's because I had messages? Because <laughs> I know what he's doing while I'm gone, looking for me. You like that? Yeah. So, you were at a hotel with this friend, 
And how many people were there in the room that you were in? Um, like four. And did okay. they stay there all night with you? No, I wasn't there all night. How okay. many men, how many women? Uh, there were girls. Mm. Other than the guy whose room it is, there's the girls. Okay. You say you didn't stay there all night. Did you ever go and spend the night anywhere, go to sleep? No. No, you didn't. Oh, man. You're saying no. this to me like I, I shouldn't have an expectation I... that you went to sleep. People go to sleep. Right, yeah, I understand that. <laughs> okay. You had like, no, like, <laughs> why would I go to sleep? Well, no. it's three in the morning. That's what people do. Right, right. No, I left there when oh, he fell God. asleep, but it was... All right, it... so she calls you a day or two later, it's like, hey, babe, and like, no. nothing's happened, I correct? Don't, I don't exactly call right, him. yeah. And so you, you take her back, I guess, because you're here. Right. What else have you seen that makes you he... believe that she's cheating? Okay, the second example... Okay, so after all that happens, I was like, maybe we just need vacation. So we rent... We go to this little beach house. We get a beach house for a few days, and, uh... And we're out there, and we have a private pier. And she's nice. like, man, my ex would love this place because he loves to fish. And, and, like, she said her ex, right? And, like, so I'm like, yeah, okay, well, tell him to come on. I'm not tripping. He's a fisherman. I understand. He want to fish, come fish. We got a private pier. It's nice, good fishing. So... You that you... kind of brother. You that kind of man. <laughs> You were okay with her ex coming? Absolutely, I man. I didn't think twice about it. So I'm out, I'm out fishing and I come inside the house, right? And I guess she doesn't hear me come back inside the house, right? And she's in the tub having this conversation. Talking about, uh, no, he ain't gonna be here. Just come over. It'll just be us. Uh, he'll be out fishing with old man all night long. Uh, Aaron, uh, uh. that's not true. Hold on, Miss Daly. Uh, okay, so long story short, my friend says, do you want me to come get you? Because I explained to my friend what I'm hearing and, like, I probably should just remove myself from the situation because I don't want this to escalate into something. I'm just going to let it play out and see how it goes because I have a feeling, and generally, I'm right. So... <laughs> All right. I, I, here, here's the thing. I'm going to ask you some yes or no questions, okay? Did you have a conversation with this friend? He called to say he's bringing a computer part for Aaron. Okay. Did you tell him to come by the house because... Uh, no, I said... Mr. He, Deshaw, I, be there. I said the door's open. He can come by and bring the computer part. I didn't say I was... I was going to go fishing, too. That doesn't take 25 minutes to conversate about in the bathroom. Like, you're gonna I was bring on the phone okay, for 25 minutes. Board, boom, got it. Nobody was on the phone for 25 minutes. Were well, you at the same people. beach house? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> right? That's what I'm trying to say. What happens after all that? Okay, well, while I was gone from the beach house, uh, the ex shows up, right? There, he could probably tell you what happened while I was gone. All right, would you step to the podium, please? <clears throat> would you state you, you, your name? You Ron, can stand, still stand next Ron, to it. Ron Rougeau. Rob, Mr. Rougeau. What's the nature of your relationship? I, I dated her for a year and a half before he did. Okay, so okay. you're her ex? Yeah. Okay. Oh! When I showed up at Beach House and I brought a girl with me. Okay. I'm not stupid. Uh, <laughs> you know? I'm not, I, wasn't, I, wasn't gonna get, uh, I wasn't gonna get caught up in this. Okay, are you the... <laughs> are you the ex that she wanted to come to the Beach House? Yeah. This is the fisherman. Yeah, I'm the fish, I like to you're fish. the fisherman. She, she, she knew I liked to fish, so she, she invited me to come up there because he liked to fish. We thought we'd be, maybe fish right. Fish right. We did. We fished the whole time. And then um, later on, you know, she, she leaves. There comes a luxury car, and she, she leaves with this guy in the car. Miss Daly does? Yeah, she takes off and leaves with this guy in the car. And then, um, then, then... Well, I stay fishing. Me and my girlfriend, we party around the house. We're the only ones there in this big house, chilling out. <laughs> You know, and you were like, this is great. I get in the jacuzzi, I get the jacuzzi. We have a blast, you know. Then I go out there fishing. <laughs> and then he, he shows up later on. Here he comes. So we go right back to the river, start fishing again, you know what I mean? But then oh, my phone's going off. It's, it's, it's texting, you know, every 30 minutes or something. She's, she's, she, Ma Megan's texting me. She's saying, is Aaron there yet? Has he showed up yet? Has he come back yet? So he goes, he goes, just don't respond, man. I said, okay. Put it back in my pocket and kept on fishing. Mr. Duchar, did Mr. Rougeau ever tell you he saw Miss Staley leaving a luxury car with another man? Yes, uh, Your Honor, he did. When I, when I first got back to the beach house the next day... Uh-huh. And when I went to get my stuff that I had left there... Uh-huh. And I said, uh... I said, so Megan left? And he said, uh, yeah, she left with old boy that came by. Did you care that she left? I mean, yeah. what... I thought coming, Judge. Like I said, I heard the conversation. Like, I know what's coming next, so I just... Mm. So you just so, got you just went to the fishing. I went to the fishing. <laughs> Mr. Right. Rougeau, you okay. may have a sit down. Um, so thank Ms. you, sir. So Miss Staley, did you leave the beach house in a luxury car no. with a man who came to pick no. you up? I left in my luxury car with by a, myself. By yourself? With all my stuff. They all completely them. they couldn't even fit a person in there other than me. So you weren't with a man while you were at the <laughs> beach house? No, but, no. And, and no man came to pick you up. Nobody came to pick me up. Okay, Mr. Deshar. She, according to your testimony, because I don't think y'all are on the same planets, but that's fine. <laughs> but 
You're, according to your testimony, she left with a guy, you fished, and then you eventually left, right? Y yes, Judge. Okay. How did you all get back together? Well, once I leave the beach house, she doesn't call, she doesn't text, like, hey, baby, coming back? Hey, where are you? How long? <clears throat> okay, about nine days she's gone. You go for nine... Y'all are separate for nine days. You don't hear hide or oh, hair no, no, from no. her. I hear plenty because I... Like, I know we have a bunch of mutual friends. So here we go about nine days later, I hear she gets in a car wreck, flips her car. So I'm thinking... Her car? I thought her car, but it turns out, no. She was in the luxury car with the same man. And she's in a car wreck and it flips? Yeah, flipped about nine times, yeah. Okay. Is this true? Times, but it you were in a car wreck? Yes. Okay, that's the only thing you all agreed to besides the fact that y'all here. <laughs> Woo! Okay. So you find out she's in a wreck. What happened when you saw her again and what was that circumstance? A week later. Okay, when I saw her again was... A week later. How many days? Shh. Man, it, it was probably at least nine days. Okay, so nine days later, you see her. Uh, During those nine days, she's, like, laid up in these hotels with him throughout the whole time. Oh, uh, you're... Okay. All right. Okay, all right. Now, what's your side of the story? When, after the beach house... Yeah. A couple days later, yes, I got into the car accident. Okay. So, game over. I'm going to a hotel. So, did you go to a hospital? N no, um, there was uh, a little incident with that. I sent the ambulance away. I didn't go. And so, you go to a hotel at that point with this man? To, yeah, to get the glass out of my... Instead of everywhere. a hospital. Right, because that's what you do when you have glass in your body, mm -hmm. Mr. Cutler. You go right. to a motel. You, you don't have insurance. <laughs> okay, so do you spend the night in the hotel with this gentleman? No, because I'm gone most of it. What do you mean you're gone most of it? When I, when I came back, he's asleep. I take a bath. I wake up. He's still asleep. So then I'm, I'm going downstairs for breakfast. So you did spend the night? But he's not... Yeah, we're not even... It's like we have two different rooms. Where do two different rooms come in? No, it's like, it's like, is this if we do? Because he's, he's doing his own thing. He's just a friend. Jeez. I can't be in a hotel with a friend. Okay. okay. We're not saying that you can't. We're asking right. you, did you stay yes. in the hotel room with him? Yeah. Okay, okay. so one not room. One room. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's like, How he has a key, I have a key. We come and go. It's our friends. Okay. How many nights did you spend in the hotel with this one. friend? One. And if I was even there the whole night, no. Okay. The eight days, the eight days before your arrest I had... in this hotel, where yeah. were you? I was at my roommate's or my family member. Are you saying that you were not with this other no. man during that time period? No. You did not have sex with this gentleman? Hell no. And you have not cheated on Mr. Ducharme? Never. All right. Mr. Right. Carla, I don't think I he... can stand any more evidence. All right. So, <laughs> with that said... We need some help getting to the bottom of this. <laughs> and fortunately, this court has done a full and a complete investigation to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> At this time, the court will call former military interrogator Lena Sisko to determine, is she cheating? <laughs> Ron, please escort Ms. Sisko in. Lena Sisko. Good day, Ms. Cisco. How are you? I am well, Your Honor. How are you? I'm doing fine. It's good to see you. Good. Good to see you. Would you state your credentials, please, for the court? Yes, Your Honor. I'm a former military interrogator certified by the Department of Defense. And shortly after 9-11, I was mobilized and deployed to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, where I interrogated members of Al-Qaeda and Taliban. Since that time, I have been working with and training law enforcement personnel, military personnel, and government agency personnel in interview and interrogation techniques. Tell us, please, what you did to investigate this case. So I had the accused write a witness statement, and she was good because she provided a lot of details in that. And so I went through it, analyzed it for any indicators of deception and truthfulness, and I put together an interview strategy. And then I interviewed Ms. Staley to see if she was cheating on Mr. Ducharme. What did you learn about Ms. Staley when Mr. Mm -hmm. Ducharme tracked her to the hotel? So Ms. Staley did admit to me that she likes to play games on Mr. Ducharme. So she will purposely disappear on him because it makes him come find her. And so she likes that. She wants to feel wanted and needed. And she told me that the time that he had come to the motel, that she even did a victory dance because she was so happy as if to say, you know what, I got him. He did come find me, so I must mean something to him. Okay. What did you find out about Miss Staley's guy friend from the beach house? 
When I asked her if she had sex with this guy, she jumped up out of the chair and cursed and said no. She kept stopping me and went through a whole entire list of details of what happened in that three day period. And I was a little exhausted because like what you heard here, it was a little confusing, but I got to the bottom of it. What was your overall opinion about Miss Staley? Miss Staley is over the top in love with Mr. Ducharme, and she even told me that this guy is her soulmate. So I do not believe she's cheating on him, and I believe she's being truthful. All right. <laughs> well, Mr. Ducharme, you came here to get some answers. You've gotten those answers. Turns out that Miss Staley has not been cheating. What is the future of your relationship with Miss Staley? <clears throat> I guess it can get better from here. <laughs>